Okay. Well, could you tell me your name? Bobby Wittenberg. Okay. Now, you're a veteran. I see. I do see you got a, a purple heart. Yeah, I was, a, I was a Marine, and I was in uh, OIF-2 in Iraq. Okay. What year, year is that? Uh, I was there in 2004. Okay. Well, as a veteran, what do you think about what Travis and, and Victor have done? Um, you know, uh, what they've done is amazing. I wish that years ago when I was in that I would have had the insight and understanding of the war that they have to, to realize that it's wrong, to realize that it's, uh, it's imperialism, uh, it's occupation, and uh, it's wrong on a human rights uh, basis and it, it's just unethical to control the people militarily. It's terrorism. It's not a war against terror, it's a war of terror. And I think that what they've done is amazing. Mm -hmm. Although those guys are incredibly brave, braver than anybody who gets on the plane to go over there. And um, I'm mm -hmm. really proud of both of them uh, to take a stand like this. Okay. Now I got a question, the whole idea of conscience objection. When you were in the Marines, were you ever trained on the subject of conscience objection, told you could file for CO status? I don't really remember coming from a military family, like I already knew, but I, a at the time, um, didn't, it, it wasn't an issue for me, like it, at the time I believed in it and, uh, and everything, so I don't, I don't really... So you were already aware of it before, but yeah, you didn't... I was aware of it before I even went into the military. Well, what about the issue in the military of uh, thinking for yourself? I mean, were you encouraged to, to have critical thinking, to thoroughly examine the reasons for war? We were explicitly told that we weren't paid to think. Are you serious? Who told you that? Oh, uh, my platoon sergeant. Like, and that, and that, and that, that, uh, that pretty much applied to anything. Like, we were there just as pieces in a machine, you know, to, to do what we were told, um, and not really to have an opinion. One of the first things you learn in the military is that your opinion's not, uh, not valid or welcome at all. Now, when, why did your, when did your views change, and why did they change? Um, I started having questions while I was still in. Because I saw, you know, it, it first started with me, I was wounded, um, and then I started seeking medical attention, and then when uh, I started being treated poorly for that, being accused of faking all this, it kind of, like, something snapped in my head, you know, I, I started wondering, well, you know, why would you treat people like this who, you know, uh, are, are doing the job that, that you asked them to do voluntarily, and I started seeing these things happen to other veterans, and then as I uh, kind of regained my humanity over period of time, largely after getting out, I began to see that, why would we treat anybody this way? Why would we go over uh, to somebody else's country, uh, take control of their lives, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, basically do what we claim that they're doing. We're coercing them through terror, and uh, that's terrorism, and I began to see that, like, just, it, it was a long progression because, like, I didn't know about groups like IBAW or anything like that. So a lot of the stuff that I came to, I had to come to myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just a, it was just a progression, and um, now I, I, I very plainly see that, that this is nothing but, but terrorism for corporate profits. Okay. And um, I think that's it. Thank you. All right. Thanks.